All right, so I am doing a video, a long-awaited video on my bike touring setup and uh, the e-bike side of things, the battery, the motor, uh, and how all that works together. All right, so the bike itself is a 1993 uh, Trek mountain bike that I actually got for my uh, 16th birthday. It's had many different iterations um, from its uh, start as a mountain bike. I did some mountain biking with it. I later uh, transformed it into more of a commuter for work. Uh, and then its first e-bike stage, which had um, a Magic Pie hub motor in it. And then uh, its current form of a touring e-bike uh, with a mid-drive fang motor in it. So starting from the top down here, we've got just our standard... Uh, Amazon mirror. I really like this one actually. It's uh, it was pretty inexpensive and it's very solid It's got an aluminum bar uh, then that clamps to the uh, handlebar uh, So the handlebars I'm using are not the stock ones as you can probably tell these are uh, Jones bars been very happy with them I was looking for more of like a relaxed laid-back sort of um, set up on this bike and these work perfectly for that they've got really long uh, foam hand grips here uh, and then plenty of places, as you can tell, my handlebars are, as you can tell, my handlebars are loaded. I've got a lot of stuff here. So I got my Garmin mounted up here, which I, I only use when I'm, I'm going on trips or going somewhere I need to navigate. Uh, I've got my iPhone uh, mount here. I like these, uh, I like these more uh, universal mounts than like the typical case mounts because you have every time you upgrade your phone or whatever you get to buy a new mount for it you get to you know do all that this way any phone i get fits in there so that's kind of handy um right here this is related to the e-bike this is a cycle analyst basically it displays uh my battery voltage the amps used um can also display mile an hour, although mine kind of flakes out on that. It can show you like watt hours per mile, does a bunch of different calculations, how many amps I've consumed. So I know roughly if I need to charge, recharge or whatever. So right here, this is an egg rider. This is a the controller for the e-bike motor itself. It allows you to adjust up and down the assist levels. And one, there's a couple reasons I chose this one. It's an aftermarket one. Uh, the displays that normally come with e-bikes are larger. They're, they're this size or maybe a little bit smaller than this. And I've got enough stuff going on up here. So I got this guy, uh, which has even more display info. It hooks up Bluetooth to any phone. And you can also program the, the uh, motor controller via this and the app. So it makes it very handy. Like I can adjust the assist levels. I can adjust the wattage, the mile, the miles an hour. I can adjust the miles an hour, the wattage, those kind of things. So it's, it's really, really handy to have uh, for fine tuning. Um, let's see here. Going around front, well, you can see I've got a little button here and this is for my headlight. So the headlight is uh, supports anywhere from like 12 to 80 volts. So it works perfect in my 52 volt system uh, and it just mounts to the uh, the stem right here so very very handy very nice to have for a while i was using the um like the battery powered lights but it makes no sense to be using battery powered lights when i have this huge battery on my bike so finally got that converted uh i also since we're at it i converted the tail light too that was a little more of a endeavor because uh, there aren't a lot of options available and to fit the rack i have so here's the rear tail light that i have that um also does like zero to 60 volts so and it just plugs in here and runs along all right and directly below my uh egg rider controller uh is the throttle so i've got the throttle here uh now what i've done <laughs> uh, with this as you can see it doesn't spring back normally by default they have a spring in them and they come back uh, so what i've done with the, the throttle is and it's kind of dangerous i don't recommend doing it because your bike can uh you know get away from you cause injury or harm to others etc uh, but i took the spring out of it and put an o-ring in so that i can use it more like a uh, cruise control so i can just set the lever and uh, leave it where it's at and then that way when i like coast and i'm doing 20 miles an hour i don't just 
drop because there's no power to like 10 miles an hour and have to go back up. It'll just maintain my speed then when I coast. So I don't use it all the time, but it's it's there. I'm very cautious about it though. Uh, I always double check it when I get on the bike and I won't turn on my controller unless I'm actually sitting on my bike. So, and the hand brakes, anytime you squeeze the hand brakes, they're hooked up electronically. So they, um, they'll uh, kill the throttle anyway. So anyway, wouldn't recommend it, but wouldn't recommend it, but that's that's the modification I've done to mine. Don't don't try this at home. All right, so moving around to the other side here, uh, I've got the you know standard brakes that come with the e-bike, and that's like I said, they've got a wire here uh, for the kill switch. Um, but I've got a thumb friction shifter. This thing is absolutely wonderful. You just click it, shift it. It is uh, indexable too, I think uh, 10 speed, uh, but I found way, way easier. Then it doesn't matter what combo or what type of gearing I have. Since there's no front derailleur, there's just the rear derailleur and I have a 10 speed on here. This is, this is just absolutely wonderful. I love it. It's one of my, one of my favorite upgrades I did on this bike. I also always put these uh, adjusters in line for the cable so that when I am riding or on tour, it just makes it easy on the fly. If I'm missing a gear or something, I can uh, adjust the cable. Like if it stretches after a while, I can tighten up the cable here. So just a kind of handy thing. Uh, the brakes usually have the the brakes usually have those adjusters built in, but the uh, shifter typically doesn't. Anyway, so uh, working our way down uh, from the Jones bar here, I have a this is a new addition. This this uh, last year I added before my trip to Boston is a red shift suspension stem. So basically, what it does is it's got a, a pivot point in there, and it's got these urethane like bushings that you put in there based on weight and handlebars and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of played with that a little bit. One thing I noticed, this bike is a steel bike, solid, there's no suspension. And unfortunately, because of the year it was made, there's no suspension upgrades for it. So when you're going fast on an e-bike, you know, even 15, 20 miles an hour, every bump, every hole you hit, every crack is that more intense on your body it's it's a lot harder when you're going faster you can feel it a lot more and this helped significantly i would have gotten a shock if i had that option available but this is the the next best thing that i could have on this bike so this is the stem right here see the logo on it but when this is depressed it swings down it's not a lot of movement to where you know it would be skittish or anything like that it's a very solid it's just an up and down uh, uh, movement on there so very nice all right so working our way down here uh, i added a this is kind of duct taped here because it likes to slide around but i just added a water bottle cage uh, on this elongated stem and this is just to bring it up to a much higher uh, and better riding position more upright position so i added this um, water bottle cage here to hold the water bottle I have a feed bag on this side, so I have the feed bag too, but I only use that for like snacks and I like to put the case for my headphones in there and my wallet in there. It just makes it very convenient to get stuff uh, in and out of. Uh, and then my GoPro when I'm, or excuse me, uh, my action camera, I've got upgraded to the DJI Action 4. I'm still using the GoPro mount, which is basically a clamp mount that I uh, clamp onto the handlebars. So that's where that goes when I'm riding. I used to stick it in the feed bag on a selfie stick, but then it like kind of bounces all over the place. I found uh, clamps like I'm using right now work really great for uh, just clamping on the handlebars and then you can grab when you need it. All right, uh, working the way down the stem here, um, we've got our mess of wires here and they all go into this Revelate Designs tank bag. And originally, when I built this bike, um, this bag uh, housed a battery. It had a very small battery, like a 10 amp hour battery that fit in here. Right now, it holds uh, sort of accessories and, and keeps my wiring all nice and neat. So I'll show you inside here. So it's kind of, of a, <laughs> it's a little of a mess in here, but uh, it does keep everything kind of out of sight and organized. Um, so I keep like my glass case in here, um, uh, some TP, some snacks. We got some, some snacks in here. Uh, but as you can see, I've got 
So here's the wiring coming in. So this little box right here uh, is very handy. And it goes in line uh, with the power and actually supplies a uh, supplies a USB C and another auxiliary USB port. So I can easily route. I can easily charge like my phone in here, or I could even route a cable up to the handlebars and um, mount it in there. So I also added this last year. It's super super handy. I uh, really like it. Really, it wasn't that much money. It was on um, Amazon. Um, actually, it connects. Sorry, it connects to the cycle analyst's uh, auxiliary meter, uh, and so do my lights. And it's just got a USB-C cable off of it, and then there's a, another aux USB that I have routed up here um, to this cable just dangling right now to charge my Garmin. Um, this down here, this is like the, the shunt uh, for the cycle analyst so that it can measure the flow of electricity through here and uh, and keep track of that and display it. Um, yeah, it's got some like hydration uh, tablets there, cliff bar. Uh, and then I use all these XT90 connectors on my build so it just makes it easy to swap stuff in and out. Um, super handy. What I also did, just for convenience, on the back side of the tank back here, I routed uh, and I sort of split the uh, power cable so that I would have a charging cable coming out the back here. So this is just the cap for it. Right, right now I have it tucked in here, um, but normally when I'm on I have it, the cable tucked in here, uh, and this is the end cap for it. Um, but normally on tour, I have that Y splitter in there, and then I set my charger on the, I set my charger on the rear rack here, and just run the cable right to here to charge, and keep the battery plugged into everything. And what that does for me by keeping everything plugged in like the cycle analyst and all that is I'm able to watch my uh, cycle analyst and it will um, show the charging uh, wattage and my amp hour capacity. It will subtract or add based on whether it's uh, charging or I'm actively using the battery. So it's kind of handy to see that go back up. Almost to the main event here with the, uh, the battery and the, the motor. So we're working our way there. All right, so on the front here, I've just got a standard set of uh, Planet Bike fenders. I've got the Arkell front uh, lowrider rack. This is my e-bike basically in its most slimmed down form. I, even if I'm riding around town, I have these two panniers on here because my battery is in this one. And I'll get into that here. But yeah, I got the Ar Arkell lowrider racks. They work great because they're super easy to level out. Um, so I like them on my touring bike and on my e-bike touring bike. So the battery, the battery is housed in here. These are Kel bags I've had for a couple years. Um, they're not 100% waterproof. They do have a, um, a waterproof cover that goes over the top. And then inside, uh, I'll show you, there's a zippable like waterproof lining. So I have the power cable just coming up right here, and then this plugs into here, which goes into all the electronics in the tank bag. So I'll get into the battery more, I'll, I'll open this up and I'll show you guys what's in it. Uh, going over here, so this is my uh, mid-drive motor. So this is a Bafang mid-drive uh, BBSO2 uh, from Luna Cycle, as you can see. And, um, I've had this for, uh, I don't know, maybe five to seven years, and it's got probably around 15,000 miles on it or more. Um, it's, been, it's been great. It's a 750 watt model, um, but it was advertised and I bought it that it had an upgraded controller or MOSFETs in it, something like that, and it's capable of 1300 watts. So the mid-drive has been absolutely great. Um, I loved it. This is the same motor I've had the whole time. I did take it apart early in the spring last year and because I was noticing it was starting to get loud like whining wise and uh, I was just going to re-grease everything and I bought 
uh, replacement nylon gear because I had read online that usually that's what goes and starts a whining. Well, as I took it apart, I found out that gear was totally fine. There was a little um, tension clip that had broke, um, so it was good that I opened it up. And the thing that was causing the noise was actually on the controller. It was uh, one of the capacitors was uh, broken open, and I think that was just making an electronic noise uh, in there. So. Good thing I opened it up, it was very well sealed. Um, took a while to get into it, but I just bought a replacement controller and it looked the exact same as the one I got from uh, LunaCycle. And I think it's something with the programming, but I think now it only does 1200 watts. Obviously not for an extended time, but um, yeah. So I, I replaced the controller in it. I replaced the controller in it, re-greased it. Uh, replaced that bearing and nylon thing just because I was in there but everything looked absolutely fantastic in there just had to order like two gaskets um, and, to put it back together I've been extremely happy with it no problems whatsoever so yeah installation was it was pretty straightforward just had to remove the old bottom bracket uh, remove the the cups on the end slide this guy in attach the bracket and uh, retighten everything uh, back up so very straightforward, the wire running here, goes up into, into here, connects to the controller uh, and everything else. Um, it also runs back and there is a uh, speed sensor back here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, the speed sensor right back here. Um, below that here, I have a kickstand, sort of a, sort of a, a center stand kickstand. Um, it's, invaluable with the weight on this thing when it's fully loaded. So I'm very happy with the center stand on this too. So going to the other side here, um, I've got a, they have a couple different variations on teeth sizes you can get. Uh, I believe this is a 50, uh, 50 tooth. Um, I fi just find that to be, to be a good range for this bike and the, the gearing in the back end here. Um, the wheels, they're not the stock wheels anymore. I actually upgraded, I actually upgraded the wheels uh, to the ones that come with the Surly Long Haul Trucker. Um, they're like 36 spoke. They were very, very durable and had a high uh, weight rating, which is perfect for the e-bike with the battery, all the gear on it, and me. Um, but they've been uh, absolutely fantastic. They went right on, and it actually, I had a like eight speed on there with the original stuff, and now this is a, a full 10 speed in the back, so I have a, a one by 10. For, it's uh, very handy. I've got just enough high-end gears and just enough climbing gears in this, so everything's worked out quite well. Since it's a one by, there's no uh, derailleur on the front anymore. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a one by with when you run the mid drives here. So there's no derailleur in the front anymore. Um, got the 10 speed cassette back here, and then just a Shimano SLX, nothing fancy, um, derailleur. This is a um, the rear rack here is a tubus rack. Um, yeah, it doesn't say the model. I uh, forgot the model, but I've been very happy with it. It's, um, it actually mounts the panniers a little bit lower, uh, which has helped with the weight distribution, uh, as you can see here. Um, so this is the top rack, and I normally have a bag up here. So I normally have a bag up here, uh, which houses my fast charger, and then I normally have my panniers uh, clamped on here and as you, you can see normally the panniers would mount up here but but because of this lower bar here it sets the center of gravity down a little bit which is very nice so the way the mid drive works pedals normally when you're going this way and so does the motor it rotates that way but the actual crank free wheels so if you hit the throttle or well, you know, when you first let off, the motor's still going, but you can freewheel. You can freewheel, basically, just the way the normal bike works at the back end. This still has a freewheel back here, too, but that's how the, the motor can actually spin, um, and you can coast. I don't particularly use the throttle a lot. I just mostly use it when I'm coasting or if I'm just taking a break because when I'm going, like, maybe like 60 mile stretches or something, I'll, instead of me stopping and just pulling over like I would on my normal bike, I'll do longer stretches, but I might use the throttle for a couple minutes while I'm standing up or relaxing or 
you know, stretching my legs out. All right, uh, one thing I didn't cover is the seat. I've got a Brooks saddle on all my touring bikes and I absolutely love it. So this is no different here. Uh, like I mentioned before, e-bike, you're going faster. Every little nook and cranny in the road, you're gonna feel a lot more. So I also got a suspension seat post for this. It was uh, pretty, relatively inexpensive on Amazon. I think I had to get some shims because this model has um, very odd seat post size, but it's worked great also. So it's just, uh, just got a spring in there and then there is a, when you take this out, there is an Allen bolt that you can adjust the stiffness of this. So very handy. Yeah, I can't move it at all. But uh, when you're sitting on it, it goes down. So. So the suspension in the seat, along with the suspension stem on there, uh, has been a, a lifesaver for sure. All right, so going back to the battery here, um, one of the reasons that I run two front panniers in there, um, actually, first off, uh, when I designed the battery, um, I did look at possibly putting it in the triangle of the frame, um, but it wouldn't, with the size battery I wanted, it just would not uh, accommodate the frame on this bike. Uh, also tried putting it higher, like, in a basket I got, but the, having the weight up that high, the battery pack I have weighs 26 pounds. So having the weight up that high, uh, the bike became very unstable steering wise. So um, easily right, <laughs> nix that idea right away. Um, the low boy panniers uh, on the front work awesome. The only thing is I have to compensate for the weight on the left side by adding weight onto the right side. So I put all my tools, I always run two panniers because of that. So I put all my tools and then I have a second charger that I carry with and I keep that on the, the right hand side to sort of balance out that weight. It's not, it's not an equal one to one. I don't have 26 pounds on the other side, but just enough weight to where it's, it's uh, absolutely normal riding it. You don't feel any pull either one way or the other. So this one houses my battery, which is 26 pounds, and uh, this just ho houses my tools and things like that, and a secondary charger. Okay, so on to the battery. So uh, in this pannier here, so this is an Arkell pannier. Um, it's got an external pouch here, little netted pouch here. I just keep like a hat and my bike lock in here. Uh, and then on the back side, I only have this on one of them. Um, the Velcro undoes here and it has backpack straps. So you can easily carry this, makes it uh, handy to move around. Uh, same thing with, you know, if I'm moving it or putting the bike in the car or something like that. So having the backpack straps uh, definitely help, especially if you're you know, loading in a car or something, it's much easier to be able to carry that battery as opposed to lifting up the bike with that battery on there. Let's go ahead and put this on the table here and I'll take the battery out. Let's go ahead and lay this down. So like I said, the, the bags themselves are not waterproof. They're like Cordura, so they're really a heavy duty, but they're not waterproof. But I do have a cover in here. Uh, and then inside they do have this secondary layer uh, that's supposed to be waterproof that zips around the bag, the battery. So, all right, let's open this up. Voila, here's the battery. So starting from the outside, I just have this shrink wrap on here. Uh, this is a 52 volt, 50 amp hour battery. So it's got, so I would say on like perfect conditions, I can do 150 miles on this loaded at 15 to 20 miles an hour in perfect conditions. No, nobody ever has perfect conditions. So. Um, with the, the construction of this battery, I used, instead of the 18650 cells, which have like a maximum capacity of, um, I think, 3.5 amp hours, I used the a little bit larger uh, 21700 cells, the ones they currently use in the Teslas, um, because they have a higher uh, density. They have a the largest cells for those are five amp hours. So I could get a higher, um, so I could get a higher capacity battery um, in a smaller, uh, smaller compact size than if I would use the 18650 cells. 
So I'll show you a little bit. Uh, this one here, I've got heat shrink on it, and then I also have um, foam on the inside too before I assembled it so that nothing can get uh, jostled around. There's a little bit more padding for everything. And I did um, sort of tuck in a uh, aquarium thermometer with a, a readout on a cable um, so that I could see uh, what the temperature is. But because it's such a large capacity battery, it's, you know, the, the it never gets that hot at all. So this is the aquarium sensor that I have in there. I think the battery's dead right now. But. So I'll kind of show you how I constructed this. So like I said, this is a 52 volt, 50 amp hour battery. So one of the reasons I went with uh, 52 volts as opposed to just the standard 48, um, one, I think 52 is kind of becoming more the norm um, because most, if not all, of the 48 volt e-bikes can handle 52 volts. Um, normally they go up to about 60 volts is their um, limit, uh, and a fully charged 52 volt battery is like 58 uh, volts. So by doing that, you're kind of, you're gaining a little bit more power and a little bit more range. You've got the power if you need it, but if you don't need it, that just basically ends up being, uh, you know, a little bit more range for you. So it's kind of uh, easy to do. It doesn't cost that much more. Uh, and the benefits of just having a little bit more power when you need it or guess what if you don't use it It's just basically uh, more capacity for you. So more efficient to the higher voltage the um, The thinner the wires you can run and things like that Although it's not really a difference between 48 and 52 The only main difference is that you're going to need a 52 volt charger for that so Give you a little insight to the battery here. Uh, it is a 52 volt uh, 50 amp hour battery um, using um, I used LG cells uh, 5 amp hour 21700 cells because they have a little bit more density than the um, 18650 so I could produce a smaller size battery pack uh, with a large capacity um, basically the 52 volts comes from 14 of those 21700 cells in series. It's called a 14S because there's 14 in series. And then there are 10 rows of those and each of those rows is adding the 5 amp hours. So 10 times 5 is 50 amp hours. So that's how we get the 52 volts from the 14 in series. And then we get the larger capacity, the, the amp hours from the rows of those that are in uh, parallel basically. So digging a little into this battery without cutting into it I can kind of show you how I got the setup I bought some cells to make a smaller battery and I'm probably going to do a video on that actually assembling the battery spot welding it that kind of stuff um, but this is just kind of give you an overview of how I did this I use these fantastic little um, battery holders here so they lock in place kind of like Legos almost you can get them in uh, in large sheets I've got a top um, to them and a bottom so you kind of encompass the whole uh, battery with that. So these are the, the little Lego plastic pieces that hold these cells. These are the um, these are the uh, 21700 cells. I think these are I don't know if it'll focus. Yeah, these are um, these are Samsung. Um, these are Samsung cells. Um, the ones I have in here are actually LG. So you've got your your 14 here that would be in series right to get 52 volts and then you'll have another one of those here another one of those here another one of those here and then they all add up to the uh, 50 amp hour capacity each row here is basically 52 volts 5 amp hours so the second one would be 52 volts another 5 amp hours so on and so forth. So this is what's inside the battery here. And then I do have a, um, a BMS here, a battery management system. The battery management system just kind of monitors and helps um, when the batteries uh, are close to a full, like 100% charge. It um, just syncs them, make sure they're within the same voltage. And there's also cutoffs if it, the voltage gets too high or the voltage gets too low. 
but it's sort of just a emergency backup, I would say. I always set my controllers to be outside of that range, so it really should never hit the BMS unless something goes bad. So all these batteries uh, were, they were all spot welded together with nickel strip, uh, and then I wrapped them in uh, foam and um, a little, to give it a little cushioning and then use the heat shrink wrap over the top of that. So it's so basically how that went together, how I assembled the battery and um, how that all works. So to show you the charger, so one of the reasons that I went with such a large capacity battery and not two individual batteries is because the larger the capacity battery, the faster you can charge it without damaging it. The batteries have like a C level. Um, I think it's like 20% or something like that. You don't want to charge over 20% 20, over 20 of the capacity. So um, with a faster charge, bigger battery, um, like one hour of charging on my 15 amp char uh, charger will get me about an additional 45 miles. So if I had a smaller, you know, 20 amp battery, but I had two of them, I'm gonna have to charge those at a much slower rate and probably only going to gain like maybe 10 miles for each hour, hour and a half, two hours charging. So much more advantageous. That's why I went this route with a larger capacity battery as opposed to multiple. Now if you do multiple, you could um, just charge them all at the end of the night too and not charge during the day. But this is my game plan was sort of be able to charge on the fly uh, as needed. Anyway, so that pretty much wraps up the battery. Um, I'm gonna get into the chargers now and I'll show you what I use for a charger. For the, uh, the secret sauce for the fast charging, I don't have anything fancy. It was just a charger that I found that was 52 volts. You know, it, it's actually like 58 volts, but that's what the, the final charge is, but it's classified as like a 52 volt charger. Um, just on like, I don't know, on some Chinese website is where I got it. I do, I wanted a 15 amp hour charger, or 15 amp charger and 52 volts. So that's what I found. Uh, this is it right here. It's just a Y power 450, I guess. So 58.8 uh, uh, volts and 15 amps. So that's pretty straightforward. It's pretty big. It's got some fans in it to keep it cool. It does get hot. I did take this apart when I got it and sprayed um, this uh, electronic like aviation protector grease stuff on there so nothing will corrode. Um, it just kind of helps, you know, because it's rain and whatever exposed to the elements when it's with me on the bike. So I just wanted to take that extra precaution, but nothing special. It was like probably around $100. But again, you need a huge battery to be able to charge 15 amps. This is even over the standard C level uh, for this battery, but I only do it midday when I'm touring. At night, like I was saying, to balance the other pannier, I have another charger, or to balance the weight of the, the battery in front on the other side, on the other pannier, I have a spare charger. And that is a much lower wattage charger. In fact, it's, uh, it's actually adjustable. So I use that at night, or you know, if I'm just slow charging at home or whatever, I only use the fast charger when I'm on the road uh, and I need that quick charge during the day. So we can dig into the other one here. Now this one was a bit more expensive. I got it because it's actually programmable. Um, it can do 36 to, I think, 60 volts. And you can adjust how many amps it's actually charging at. So this is the uh, cycle satiator, is what it's called. So it's got uh, buttons to go through your programming settings here. Um, I still have the, the, the brand new plastic on it, but I just keep that on there. Uh, it's got a couple different adapters for it, um, but super handy because you can also limit the voltage on this charger. And, and this was quite expensive. It was like $300. Um, but I can also say, hey, don't charge it to the full 100%, the 58 volts, stop at 56. Or if I have a 48 volt battery, I can tell it to stop at 48 or whatever I want. And I can say how fast to charge it to up to seven amps. So really super handy, especially because um, I still have my old like 48 volt uh, battery that I could use for another e-bike, things like that. This, this I can charge multiple voltage batteries and the way I want. And it's fully waterproof too. That's another uh, key thing. 
Okay, well, I hope, uh, I hope this video helped uh, explain some of my setup, um, how my e-bike's hooked up, how the battery works, how my charging works. I hope this uh, answers some of your questions. If not, uh, make sure to post them in the comments and uh, try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks. I will see you on the next one.